Where did where did Doe Lives Matter come from? <laughs> Doe Lives Matter. I mean, I, I've heard the I've heard the story. I know um, your background. I know your family, where you're coming from. But why are you so passionate about Doe Lives? Honestly, it started out as a joke, and then it still is a joke. But then, to be 100% honest, it's something that I am actually very passionate about. But I have to be careful because I'm not a professional by any means as like as far as like saying, oh, the, these are the numbers, these are the facts, these are this, this is this. I mean, I have no degree in biology. I have no place saying like, oh, this is the way that we ought to manage our wildlife. So let me just preface it with that. However, I do have common sense, or at least I like to think that I have common sense. <laughs> and to me, it makes zero sense if we're trying to grow the deer population. And some people say, oh, we're not trying to grow the deer population. We sh the deer population is too high. Well, I'm a hunter. I go places that most people are not willing to go nowadays. If you want to ride a bike, you want to ride horses, you want to ride uh, an ATV or a truck, you can't go the places that I go. Bottom line. The only way you're going to get there is by hiking in on your own two feet, remote places. And you go back into these places, there's no deer, nowhere near compared to what it used to be. Now, granted, I wasn't around in the eighties, you know, the seventies, eighties guys that I hunt with, you know, they tell me all these stories like, dude, there were, there were deer all over this country back in the day. You know, when I was a kid, dude, there was deer everywhere. There was bucks everywhere, you know, and, and, decent sized deer you know not like today where like if you want to shoot a big deer a mature deer it's hard it's mm -hmm. not common i would say it's not commonplace to find a deer that is six seven eight years old like most of these deer are getting pounded at stinking three years old two three years old like they don't even have a chance man and we're destroying like we're killing them you know? And so anyways, my point being is that when it comes to doe life's matter, the deer population back in the eighties, I don't think, at least to my knowledge, they don't have like a hardcore set number that there's no like hardcore data saying this is how many deer there were back in the eighties or the seventies, but they have estimations and it depends on who you talk to. There are estimations, 900,000, at least 900,000 deer in the state of Utah. In the 80s? Is that what you're saying? Like, yeah, like in the 80s or 70s. I can't remember. I think yeah. it's 80s. But so if that's true, if that was true, like it was at least 900,000 deer. You know what the population is today? Like in 2024? Well, if I had to make a rough guess, probably 50,000. It's, it's 300,000, like give or take. Okay. Around 300,000. We have a third of the amount of deer that used to be here back in the 80s. If that's true, right? Now that's, that's again, I'm saying if that's true. I believe it because you look at all these deer that were killed back in the 80s. They're some freaking toads, dude. They're huge. The only way they get that big is they can mature. They're not getting slaughtered when they're two and three years old, right? It just means there was more deer. And I mean, there has to be. You go down to the Henrys. Have you ever heard of the Henrys? No. By the way, are the Henrys down by Lake Powell? Is that where yeah, they're at? Yeah, the Henrys are down by Lake Powell. So say there were 900,000 deer in the state of Utah back in the 80s. And now say there's only 300,000, right? If they're actually doing it correctly, right? Like counting correctly. If that's true, right? Mm -hmm. The guys that are managing the wildlife, what they're claiming is that, or many of them are claiming, I'm not saying every single one is claiming, but many people will argue and say, Oh, the reason why there's 300,000 deer now, or we have significantly less, is because the land can only support that many deer, right? Any more than 300,000 deer, the deer are going to start starving to death, is what they're claiming. That is a bunch of living crap. There is not too many deer. There are not too many deer in this state. And the reason why I say that is because you go down to a place like the Henrys. Anybody that's been to the Henrys, the Henry Mountains. It is in the middle of nowhere. And it is in the middle of the stinking desert. Okay? Desert. 100 and plus degrees down there. Half the year out of the year. But then out of the middle of nowhere. Rising from the desert. The Henrys. I mean, it's not that big of a mountain, right? There are deer everywhere on those mountains. Everywhere. They're everywhere. And they're not suffering. 
And why is it? It's because it's a limited entry unit and they only allow 20 some, I think it's like 24 deer or something like that. Or maybe more with like management deer, you know, like three by four deer and stuff. like that. I don't know exactly how many tags. I don't think it's more than 50 mule deer tags that come off of that unit. Yeah. But anybody that's been down there that sees how many deer are down there, it's insane. They're everywhere. I mean, they're everywhere. You look here, there's deer. You look over there, there's deer. And they're big deer. They're, I mean, they're the biggest deer in Utah, like consistently, right? You go down there, you're going to see mature deer everywhere. Big, huge deer. There's not many other places in Utah where you can go and you can see that many deer. And the only reason why that is, is because, dude, they're not killing, they're not slaughtering them down there. They're not killing, they're not killing them off before they have the chance to grow. And so the reason why coming full circle, coming back to doe lives matter, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, it makes absolutely no sense to kill the does. Why in the world would you be killing the does if you want to grow the population of, of mule deer? Who in their right mind? That's what I want to know. It's like, who in their right mind was like, hey, let's start killing the does. Let's sell some doe tags. And that's the thing is that's what I think it ended up happening is this thing in DNR was like, hey, we need some more money, bros. Uh, oh, I know. Let's sell some doe tags. Yeah. And then they did. Like, I don't know how that happened. But it's like, I just can't imagine why you would be killing does. And then put the management side away from it. You know, put put that all to bed. Put that to the side. If you're a freaking man, if you consider yourself a hunter or, and a sportsman, why are you shooting does? Or a cow, you know, for elk. I've been with duck hunters, you know, like these duck hunters, and they're like, no, we don't shoot the hens. We don't shoot hens. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 we don't shoot the hens. I'm not a big bird, bird hunter, so, you know, when I go out with serious bird guys they're like yeah don't shoot heads if you see a hen do not shoot it you know and i'm like okay yeah, yeah i respect that it's the same thing with those like why if you call yourself a sportsman or even a hunter or even a freaking man like even a man are there are there any other animals out there where it's okay to shoot the female because i'm thinking about <sighs> cougar hunting then like but they won't let you shoot a female with female cougars um do you know what a female cougar is that even called kitty no it's not a kitty. <laughs> queen yeah i don't even know i'm pretty sure yeah it might have to double check me on that but i'm pretty sure the only time you can't kill a female if it has kittens mm-hmm. if it has kittens you can't kill it but nobody does it the like, stories i've heard yeah it's yeah, like if someone's taking you out to go cougar hunting all those guys that have those dogs, yeah. they won't let you shoot them. Oh, yeah. No. If, it, yeah, you're totally because right. Because they know that it, it that's their job security right there, in my yeah. opinion. And the reason why I don't know very well with cougars, the truth is because I would never even consider killing a female cougar. If we walked up there and I was like, oh, that's a female, I'd be like, no, nah, I ain't going to shoot it. Yeah. Like, I ain't going to do it. Why would you? It's the only thing that can reproduce, right? A male cannot hook up with another male and get another baby. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. not going to happen. But one male can can breed multiple females with with deer you can have one buck breed with 10 different does and yep. i mean i don't know how many that they can actually do in one day but theoretically one buck could breed 20 30 40 deer does yeah. you know over a, a week two week time period so what what do you think we should do what what's their conclusion with doe lives matter i mean, i i feel like what you're saying is that it's just a money grab yeah, I Which, mean, I to think be so. honest, in Utah, I feel like tags are a lot of money grab because I I don't even buy tags because first off, I'm not super into hunting. Second, I know I'm not going to shoot anything. I just go out there to have fun. Yeah, and that's the thing because so many people are going to argue and say, "Well, I got to put meat in my freezer." Oh, you got to put meat in your freezer, but you've never taken care of a deer. You don't even know how to process a deer. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I was hunting with a dude one time. You know, he's hunting for a buck and it was a small buck it was like a two point or something like that i mean it's a dinky little buck you think i should shoot it think i should shoot it i'm like no don't shoot that thing it's a stinking two point let it live it's like two three years old maybe oh i don't care if he's a big buck he's like i don't care if he's a big buck yeah i just want the meat i just want the meat well we get down there he doesn't even know how to process the deer he doesn't even know how to do anything and i'm like Mm -hmm. he doesn't even know how to quarter it out that's what i think is hilarious i'm like don't say oh i'm gonna shoot a doe for meat you ain't gonna shoot no doe for meat, dude. If you want meat, go shoot a freaking buck, bro. They're way bigger. You'll get way more meat out of them. 
Don't shoot no doe for me. Well, meat. have you ever done the math on the actual cost of going out and hunting to get the meat from a the, from a deer? I haven't done it, but I, oh, I'm sure I it's would, ex- crazy expensive. Oh, I would bet you it's way more expensive than just going to the store. Oh yeah, and buying beef. But nine times out of ten, guys are sending their deer to a processor and they're processing it for them. They're not even doing it themselves. You claim that it's for meat, but dude, you can't even process your own meat. Now, I can say that I genuinely process all of my own deer. Yeah. I have never once sent my deer to a processor. I have done it all my very, myself, literally with my own two hands. And why is that? Because that's important. When you're hunting, when you're going to take the life of an animal, I think so many people are just take that soul lighthearted. Like you're just going to kill something. Mm-hmm. And so many people, I think, are just killing things to kill them. You know, they're going out to hunt just because they want the adrenaline rush of pulling the trigger and killing an animal. The truth is, yes, it is fun and it is exhilarating, you know, to kill an animal, but that shouldn't be your purpose. And when you do do it, you should treat it with respect. That's why I process all my own meat. I know the processor, the game processor, isn't going to treat it with as much respect as I do. You know, I mean, I went out there, I made the memories, going out on the hunt, being with families Mm -hmm. or friends, you know, making the memories, I feel like I'm obligated to see it through all the way, you know, to process it through all the way. And then, you know, eventually I eat it. If you're going to hunt, you should be prepared. See it through, see it through, process the animal, take care of it. And some people are like, Oh, I can't. Well, well then why are you doing it? I mean, I know guys that do, they just go on hunts, hunt after hunt, after hunt, after hunt, just, Mm -hmm. you know, killing stuff. And I understand all these TV guys that, You know, they go on hunts, you know, they're going on five, six different deer hunts in a year in throughout different states and, you know, killing, dude, you can't eat that many deer, like a Mm -hmm. single guy can. Going to these really small towns, these small areas, you know, like up in Alaska and like there's these uh, like little villages up in Alaska that have these caribou hunts, like these native islands. And then they let the the native process it and then they paid them to do it because on that island, there's... 30 people that live there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so it's just a way for them to get more money, right? So, I mean, there's different things, like something like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, I understand that. You know, like you're you're yeah. letting them you're letting them process it because of the fact that it gives them, it gives them, you know, money to survive mm-hmm. and to, to buy the things they need and want. And then also they do keep some of it because then they eat it all yeah. year. You know, that, that's what they eat. There's no grocery store. There's no convenience store. You have to fly everything in, you know? Yeah. Those. And so they actually eat a lot of it. So like, I understand that if, if people are genuinely like are eating it and using it, that's what, that's the point. Mm-hmm. I feel like me personally, and not everybody has to do it this way, but when I kill something, I enjoy processing it. 